So welcome back to project development and operations it's type of new business uh, startup uh, type of entrepreneurial class. Um, there is a Facebook group, Entrepreneurship in East Asia, you guys are aware of. Today, we're going to be going through uh, very quickly a review of what we talked about in uh, previous classes and focus quite a lot on how to develop the information, how to develop the financial information, uh, particularly um, how to get market analysis, how to get information from, from customers. And then we're going to get into more of the assignment uh, processes related to you should know what is a Ghent chart or a PERT chart. For your uh, final assessments, you should all have a Gantt chart, a PERT chart. So we haven't talked about it too much yet. Make sure you know what that is, but let's start with information. You know, for our class, there's different objectives. Uh, you need to satisfy the university objectives. We've gone through uh, a bunch of what we're looking at, but with information, um, let's make sure that we understand most information in the world is terrible. Most information in the world is probably wrong or biased or, or, or messed up. Um, and if you invest your time and money, you can lose a lot of your money. So what is the most reliable? Most reliable information is information that is internationally uh, reviewed by experts in your specific area. So if we're talking about new business startups and project developments, the international experts in uh, startups, uh, those experts will review some other materials before it's published, and then it goes into magazines. The world's best is part of the web of science. Um, and the social science cited index or SSCI, uh, social science, cited, that is the that is sorry, my dog's going a little crazy. Uh, that's going a little bit. Um, it's the best in the world. ESCI is the expanded site expanded sciences citation index. Make sure uh, you understand that is also good. But the easiest to check is the Scopus materials. Go to scopus.com. You can get a lot of information there through your university association with these journals. Um, if your university has issues accessing some of that, there is a back door. It's uh, increasingly becoming popular online. And then this uh, link that you have right here, this science dash hub uh, for HK is popular in, in some places, but the Sci hub accesses this. For example, in international business management, the best international expert peer reviewed information that you can definitely trust and reliable um, for international business and management is the Academy of Management Annals. Anything that shows the Academy of Management is usually very, very trusted. Academy of Management Annals is number one. Academy of Management Journal is number two. Uh, the Academy of Management Perspectives is number 13. Um, and then there's others similar to that. Journal of Marketing, Strategic uh, Management Journal, Journal of Marketing Research, Journal of International Business Studies. Later, make sure you talk to Thong and I and we will show you the actual journals for project management and show you the journals specializing in entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, those should be very useful for you. These are very popular by the, the real experts of the world. Um, and they are good because they show the references. Everything they show, you can check and you need to be able to re replicate it what they're saying, if you do the exact same thing, otherwise it's not going to be good. However, also, which is at a Scopus level, is a very popular information from Forbes, Fortune, um, Harvard Business Review, I believe The Economist is in this now. Those do not show references, they're just stories, but they're stories that aren't really checked by international expert peer reviewers, but they are very good. And since they're so famous, having so many millions of people reading it, if they make problems, they'll, they'll know about it pretty quickly. So um, that's also good. Less reliable, less trusted than this is just generally nationally peer reviewed journals um, surveying people since some people may uh, think they're correct, 
but they haven't actually tested it. They haven't actually done proper research, so maybe they are mistaken. Um, and then there's lots of magazines and newspapers that um, are just telling whatever is popular, whatever is a popular story or trendy story, fashion magazines, gossip magazines, and almost all companies, almost all businesses, consultants, organizations, including universities, uh, organizations, government, um, .com websites, they should be trusted, but understand that Almost no organizations are going to say bad things about themselves. They're only going to say what they want to promote. And almost all of them are biased towards something they want to promote. Like a university is not going to say how many students they fail or how many students aren't happy with a teacher or how many students have, have problems. Um, that stuff is only um, found sometimes in the, the, the very advanced research journals. It's not found in these other ones. So these are less reliable. And then again, the less reliable is CNN, and BBC, and social media. So here's a quiz. Um, this information that is the world's most reliable, sometimes it's written by the international uh, experts Sometimes it takes six months to research this, and then they will write it, and they will send it to this journal. Here's one journal. Here's another journal. Here's another journal. And sometimes these journals might take two, three, four, five, seven years to get another international expert to review it and accept it for publication. Sometimes you have to change it and review it uh, or revise it many times. So that's why this is really good. They put a lot of time into checking it's absolutely true. So why do we even talk about CNN or BBC? Why do I talk about social media? Is there any value in social media? What about Huyen um, uh, Lam? Can you guess? Is there any value from using newspapers? Or social media? Yeah. Um, uh, you asked about using uh, uh, reading a newspaper on social media, yeah? Um, yes. More specifically, you need to make a new project. You need to make a new business. And you might invest lots of time, maybe you know, all of your life savings money, all of the money you have, and you might borrow money to start this new project. So you need to have good information. Yes. Is it okay to use this stuff that takes a long time to publish? Or is it okay to use this um, newspapers or news or social media? My, my specific question is, is there any value in using a newspaper? Is there any value in just using a blog or social media? Uh, I think the value when you use the reliable uh, resources is more more value than uh, some information in blog or newspaper because right. uh, yes because um uh some professor uh, used um many years to develop their their thought and they collect uh, experience from the other things so it takes a lot of time to uh, complete um a uh, 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 study or a research uh, to give us um, the um, reliable and actual information. So right, I think, absolutely. Yeah. So this is the best. I agree. This is the best, most reliable. However, my question is, is there any value in using social media um, or a newspaper? Yes. Should you even think about it? I think it's um it, it can be a train and new up to date. Absolutely, yes. This stuff might be old. And as we saw, the whole world changed in the last two years. And some of these journals may take three years to, to research and publish. So it hasn't changed. This is three years old by the time it gets published. But CNN is new today, this morning. And Facebook is new in real time. So it is less reliable. It's not tested by experts, but it's what people 
are saying now. It's the current information. So you have to have a combination of both. This is new. This is old at the top. But this is absolutely true versus the only thing true about this is that somebody said it. Somebody believes it. Maybe they're crazy and they're, they're lying, but somebody is saying it. So you, you need to understand this is the newest information. This is the best. Use both. So we, we have that. Let's go on. We've also talked about um, you need to be able to develop your business plan, starting with something short, like start with a 30 second introduction of yourself. Then you can make a two minute introduction. Just keep adding information. So um, with your 30 second summary, build up what's most important for your business. And then we went through and we, we talked about the idea of there's a uh, hundred to 150 questions. Just keep adding information. That's usually best. So um, that's what this stuff is. Uh, what exactly is your product or service? Not just what you think of it, but what the customer is going to understand. And these are the top 15 questions that I think you should start with thinking of. Many people will study your detail for a long time and you will focus on small details that the customers don't notice or they don't care about. So uh, again, make sure you, you talk about what, what is exactly your, your details and why use that and not the competitors and who specifically is going to use it when they might have been using the competitors for the last 10 years. So make sure you answer those questions in your, your project. That is, is vital. Uh, the idea of how are you going to have a competitive advantage? We're going to talk uh, a little bit more about that, but most of the rest is a lot of the, the, the financing. This is all financing. So we're going to talk a lot about that, how you're going to do marketing, how you're going to do uh, personnel and staff and training. So let's go through more of these things. Um, the competitive advantage again. Here they are. I flash them to you. How do we have anybody in class that can um, comment on what are the uh, forces that impact competitive competitiveness? What are the forces that impact competitive challenge or your competitive advantage? Anybody remember what they are? This chart here, strange chart. Anybody pay attention? <laughs> Uh, for me, okay, I can ask like um, to touch the competitive advantages. I think for like for example, from our project um, management, uh, we care about the fashion, the fashion company e-commerce, and that's why the supply, the number of supplier is very important for us because the number of supplier when uh, yeah if we have a, a huge number of supplier. We do not depend so much on just every supplier, and that's why we can increase uh, the variety of uh, our products and uh, the power of supplier with the reduce lead speed, and that's why it's important for us. Yeah. Good. Good. So suppliers is important, but um, this expert, Michael Porter, what he was saying is there's two aspects to the uh, suppliers in some sense. The idea of the bargaining power, do they have strong bargaining power, negotiation ability, or do they have weak? So for example, if there's only one company that can give you that supply, they have very strong bargaining power. But if there's many different companies that can give you something, then they have very weak. So you have stronger negotiation ability. And similar to that, that idea of competitors. Some of your suppliers may be competitors. Uh, like in Korea, like in Japan, for example, a lot of these large uh, conglomerates, they will make the supplies, but they also may be directly competing with you. So that rivalry amongst other uh, companies is important. That's number two. New entrants, new people coming into your business uh, is another one. Bargaining power of the buyers and um, how ev almost every product or service has something else that a customer can use instead of your product. 
So there is a substitute. Make sure you're aware of that. And so in your business model, think about these things. Um, the profitability based on these things changes from industry to industry. This is a little bit old information, but it's showing general amounts of profitability for whatever you're in. Um, you just said um, textiles and clothing. Where do we see that? So security brokers is most profitable, soft drinks, software, pharmaceuticals, perfume, advertising agencies, alcohol, semiconductors, uh, clothing. Here it is. So men and boys clothing is generally about 19.5% profitable overall for the industry in the United States. So your profitability should be similar to that. However, since we are in Vietnam, maybe you don't have to pay as high uh, costs as they do in the United States, but at the same time, your final customers might not pay the same high level uh, of fees. So always uh, link your stuff to whatever information you can get. Um, so we went through, there is a, a bunch of information here related to business uh, plans. Almost everything he in, here in gray is what a business plan should have. And this information, I know you can't see it easily, but this is just a summary. The idea of what is in a real business plan, we've already talked about that. So let's get into more details about the um, financing and getting information. The, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, is this that some of you may not be aware of. And the second thing I want to talk about is my experience. So uh, ask me about my experience, and then I'll just show you the, the academic and the research with the textbook say. So first thing, everybody doing almost anything can work internationally. There's almost no one that cannot do international business. You make a product, you make a service, you can share that to the world. And most people have learned that from an old professor that learned it maybe 20, 30 years ago when they were in school and they're teaching that same 20 year old information. And that old information was, there was no internet, there was no email back then. So you had to go to the other country to make the sales. And a lot of people still think that. And it, that is very good in some sense. If you can do a, a, a meeting with a customer, then you have the best, uh, best potential for a relationship. However, it's very expensive. So I wanted to show you what this is. And so anybody remember, what am I talking about on this slide? What is this TC? What is this whole slide about? You guys remember? I think it's really important to understand. It's related to the government. The government is taking your tax money and a lot of people complain about it, but many things, many parts about the government like this is really valuable. So what I'm talking about here is embassies. Go ahead. Somebody yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, the embassy that can become our, let's say uh, uh, they can do appetize uh, for the business free of charge. If we uh, want to do visit in China, we come to the embassy of Vietnam in China and they can effort our, our company to the market. Yes. Um, here is uh, a very small country uh, by population size, Canada. Canada is a very small country, only 30 million people. You guys are more than three times bigger, so you have more people working with the government around the world than Canada does. But in Canada's embassies everywhere, very, very small percent of the time. I say much less than 10% of the time, an embassy will help a tourist. But probably 90% of the time, the embassy and everybody working in the embassy, including the ambassador, is trying to help companies from your country to, to make sales and to grow and to, to profit, to, to grow around the world. People don't remember that, and the government doesn't do a good job of, of marketing that in Canada or in your country. So in the Canadian embassy, 
their website shows I can pick any country I want and there will be embassy staff working for me. For example, Australia, Mexico, New Zealand, France, Germany, Venezuela, United States, the northern part of the United States, uh, Brazil, China, Italy. In this um, image, just for Italy, it will show the name of the staff that is a specialist in your particular product or service. Some of you are focused on clothing. Some of you are focused on restaurants. Some of you might be focused on real estate. So they will have an expert for each of your areas and they can introduce you to potential buyers, partners, agents, manufacturing representatives, distributors, importers, consultants, accountants, government officials. Uh, well, I need to keep going on. Chambers of commerce, very, very important in order to get connections locally to help you. People for transportation, distribution, logistics, lawyers, um, patent attorneys, technology sources, financial institutions. This is just a, a summary. This is just some of what they can do for you. And you already paid for it. As long as you are a business in your country, your taxes, your government has made your embassy people to do this stuff. And they will give you reports. I have come, uh, this is an example. I was consulting. Uh, Canadian companies, they're supposed to be very smart, they're supposed to be very uh, technically advanced, advanced nation, advanced people, you would think, and several companies have uh, hired me to help them get into other countries throughout Asia. Some of them believe the old-fashioned style, they want me to take their top executives and introduce them to people in other cities, in Tokyo, or in Seoul, or in Singapore, or, or New Delhi, or Mumbai. Um, and so I have to go and, and this example, I just took executives basically to Singapore, just this area alone, and then came back. But because we went with a few top executives and they brought a lot of their marketing material and a booth, and they wanted to give away uh, gifts for advertising and they're collecting name cards, um, this whole idea that one trip cost $61,000. And they were hoping, this is a real story, the Canadian company hoped they were going to get $600,000. So your, maybe I'm cheating now, <laughs> your business plan about how you're going to grow your business, whatever your product or service is, probably you should talk about your initial plan as you're going to take your product to New Delhi or take your product to Tokyo or take it to New York or Paris and start trying to do sales. That is normal. And so the, the costs of doing that, you would have a, a, a airplane ticket, the hotel, your meals that you don't have to pay for meals really at home. You have to pay for meals when you're traveling, the taxi fees, all of that is absolutely business expense. And once you revise, this is your old business plan that you should submit, um, and then you upgrade details. If you work with your embassy, all you need to do is send them an email or phone them, and then send them a, a PDF, a paper describing your company, number one, to prove you are a company in your country. And then number two, what is your real product? And then what do you want to know? And then those, so you, they will share, TC means the trade commissioner, that's the embassy staff doing international trade and they're commissioned or, or managed, their responsibility is to manage that. They will also have websites and office sites. Um, they can send one or several staff to many places to go to international meetings or go meet potential customers, go meet all of those people you want to talk to. And they can promote you 24 hours a day, seven days a week in their website. Um, and they may make postings in Facebook and Twitter and at conferences. They can, uh, um, for you, what I did is I did all of this stuff. And then I, after they made the uh, customer um, list and the potential partners list and the lawyers lists, and consultant lists, 
and they gave me their reports that they managed. All of that stuff, first of all, was free. Then I flew over and I didn't just fly from Toronto to Singapore like I did here. This was Toronto to Singapore and then we went home. We went to generally one big meeting in Singapore and we went home and it was $61,000, the cost of like a, a nice Mercedes. Here, we went to, let me see if I can make this a little bigger so it's clear. Um, I went from uh, Toronto, Canada to Tokyo, and then went to Seoul, then we went through uh, Taiwan. Um, and we stopped in Seoul for a while. And we took different flights around to uh, Beijing and Shanghai, and then we came back. And then from uh, Seoul, we went on to ta Taiwan, went on to, to Bangkok, to New Delhi, and then we had a different flight in New Delhi to uh, many different cities in India, and then we went to um, other countries uh, and um, places like Borneo and in Malaysia and Singapore. Um, all of this only cost $16,000. And we actually, whereas here we, ex oops, here we expected to get 61000 Sorry, it cost $61,000. We hoped to get $600,000. The truth was they got zero. At, you know, six months later, a year later, there was zero sales from this. This one cost, you know, a, a small part of that, and they hoped to get $80 million, but they actually got $21 million in sales and contracts from that. So please make sure your business plan is saying not only what your product and business is, but how are you going to do marketing? How are you going to do operations? You're going to go to these foreign countries where your best customers are and you're going to try to meet with them that's just an idea and then you talk about you realize with technology in the embassies it's much cheaper to do it this way that's one way that you can revise your business plan it will help uh, hopefully that helps with you guys any questions about trade commissioners or using the embassy before we get into finances sorry uh, could you please go to the to the left yes that's one uh um is this different if you apply for the b2b or b2c situation the embassy staff is the boss right um actually the the minister i'm canadian for example and so the minister of foreign affairs or the minister of industry they are basically the real boss if i have a complaint with anybody trying to work with me, giving me this information, I should talk directly to that trade commissioner. And so that is this person, he's not ambassador, they're not a, a minister, they're just an officer in the embassy or the consulate in whatever city I want to go to, talk to them. If they don't satisfy me, I can complain to their boss. If they don't satisfy me, I can complain to the ambassador. If they, if the ambassador doesn't satisfy me because they're all working for me, right? I pay their salary with taxes. And if that doesn't work, I can complain to the minister in Canada. And so- Sorry, but uh, in the case of Vietnam, we don't have, we, we cannot rely too much on the ambassador. Uh, no, that, uh, uh, I, we are doing argue. the business in Vietnam, yes. Yeah. So Vietnamese business in the uh, foreigners. And many of our company, we have to set up the agency by ourselves. We hire the uh, foreign agency to represent our company. Uh, in, have you uh, worked with the embassies for uh, business purposes we, before? We, we try to contact the embassy in Korea and they say uh, a <laughs> yes and uh, we have this, but uh, we uh, uh, you should uh, do the initiative, and we can support on uh, very small events. So we have to do by ourselves. Okay, and so we do the contract with one Korean uh, agency, tourism agency, to represent our company. So I think in this case, uh, uh, it's not really the embassy, but the Korean agencies will will do the uh, the thing on the right on the right column first, right? Um, let, 
thank you for talking with that. It's, it's good that we have somebody that also has experience with this. I want to make sure everybody realizes that this is everywhere. And I need to point out that the government sometimes is hard to understand how to use, but I've been using it for a long, long time. And so I've had experience with it. Usually some people may misunderstand. And if you are a Vietnamese company making a Vietnamese product and you're trying to sell that product in Korea, you might be able to get information from the Korean embassy. But there's two things you have to understand. The, the first thing is every embassy is working for people that pay taxes for them. You in Vietnam are not paying the taxes in Korea. So the embassy people and the consulate people are only trying to help Korean companies, not Vietnamese companies. So they're not really interested in, in helping you. That's number one. If I mean go, the Vietnamese embassy in Korea. Okay, so the Vietnamese embassy in Korea. Yeah, we try to talk it, to them, but it's not work. Um, it's possible. I have had sometimes a bad experience in one embassy and consulate, and then I went to a, another one, and it was completely different. These staff that uh, are in the embassy, you need to have good relationships with them because number one, they should have hundreds of files about your industry. As long as you show you are a company from your country, they should be able to give you some information. Maybe the information's old, maybe it's dated, maybe um, you don't like it because they don't understand your business but they, they should be able to give information. Um, I can tell you, I have done this for over a decade. And like I say, I, I have, in this one trip, one experience, I had a Canadian company that wanted me to help them go into Asia, period. They, I asked them where in Asia, because it's very big. There's over, you know, 2 billion people. And they said, they don't know. They want to know some place in Asia that they can go and expand. And so I started talking to them about Singapore because they knew nothing about Asia. They didn't speak any languages. They didn't know any contacts there. Singapore and Hong Kong at that time were still the English speaking, English thinking type of community in the middle of Asia. And so they agreed they're going to try to start in Singapore and then branch out. So the staff went to Singapore. Over here, um, although this group, I took some executives and junior executives to this show. Over here, I was doing the exact same thing. And I just took the product, uh, the PDF, the, the file that was promoting it, gave that to the embassy people in each of these places. Like the embassy in Tokyo is not going to promote people in the embassy in Seoul, and they're not going to promote the embassy in New Delhi. I had to find these type of people in each city. So you just go to the embassy website. And first of all, for you, in Korea, the embassy business that we're talking about, it's so big and it's so smart, it's so advanced that they've spun off a whole new division just to promote Korean trade. And it's called Kotra, not just in the embassy. So the embassy now focuses on basically education and tourism or, uh, or your safety of Korean tourists traveling versus the business details are now managed through Kotra, but the embassy manages that. Let's get back to, to this. Of this one trip, I had some people that uh, picked me up at the airport in Tokyo, not uh, just outside of Tokyo. They picked me up at the airport. They drove me to the embassy in Tokyo. They had the embassy staff that had a huge conference room for me with more than 20 different potential, very big customers. They were also giving me Canadian salmon, Canadian maple syrup, Canadian wine, Canadian ice wine, which is very, very expensive wine. All of that stuff was given to me and as samples 
to many of the customers there because the embassy was supposed to promote them. And it cost me nothing. And after the meeting, I had uh, more than 20 different companies' name cards. And I met several people from each company. And many of those companies signed contracts with me. And then at the end of that meeting, which was about three or four hours, the embassy people drove me back to the airport and I flew on to the next country. It cost me nothing. I just landed at the airport, stayed there for a day, and then went on to another place. And I made a heck of a lot of money for the company. However, other places, like when I was in Malaysia, <laughs> they didn't do anything. <laughs> and they were basically kind of rude. And so I had to make some complaints. And it took more than a year for the complaints to actually be found. And then they, they contacted me saying, sorry that there was a problem, sorry that we weren't able to help. Is there something we can do later? And by that time, it was already too late. Um, so some places, the people will help you, some places they won't. But in general, in my experience, if you know about those, they, they generally do help you. And don't just target one city, you can target many cities. And you can ask those workers in each city to help you. And it's not just the embassy, it's the consulate. Like the Vietnam government, they have your embassy in Seoul, but they also, I believe, have a consulate in Busan. And uh, they'll probably have an embassy in Beijing, but you also have a consulate in Shanghai, things like that. So both the consulate and the embassy will have staff getting reports. Um, try to go through it and, and good luck. Does, does that answer your question? I think, uh, I think I can uh, discuss with you later about this problem because there's many things behind it. Okay. Yes. Um, let's go on to the financials. The idea of... So should we have a break and then after that we can go to the financial uh, knowledge? Um, sure, let's have a break, but I'd like to go through uh, a little bit about some of the financial details first, so uh, it's in your mind and you can think about it during the break. And then after the break, we'll go back and we'll go into it in more detail. The, let's start with the idea of um, the sales. Before I get into these finances uh, and details of how to do selling, um, how to get your financial statements, I'll tell you a story. One of the businesses that I started was a, a restaurant and bar, similar to the Burger King group here. You want to start uh, a new restaurant. I was checking into that in Seoul, Korea. I um, was not only a, a I, I wasn't a local, uh, I was a foreigner here, but I also had never owned a restaurant before. And I wanted to start an English restaurant in this country. And so I, I didn't know how much to charge for drinks. I, I didn't know um, if I should serve food or how to be profitable. I just knew that I compared in all of these potential um, businesses that we could do. Let me go back and, and show you this again. For example, I saw some of the food products um, were pretty highly profitable. Um, and then just selling wine and brandy, alcohol, that is pretty profitable. Um, but language uh, and, and advertising and stuff like that, uh, having a center that not only sells food, but we help people learn the language, that was very profitable. So I wanted to make a restaurant and bar that served alcohol and served food and served language lessons and served uh, culture lessons all together. I knew to be the best, you need to focus on one thing. So providing Canadian style atmosphere or American style atmosphere and food and drink, that was my long-term goal. But I started without anybody knowing of me, with there's nobody marketing before I started. 
nobody knew of me at all. So <laughs> we're not going to have a lot of customers. So I started by just walking around, checking what the other restaurants are doing. What are the other bars doing? And surprisingly, I went into another bar that was very similar, but on the other side of town. And I just stayed there for many hours. And I went back the next day and the next day. Why I stayed there is I was serving how many customers they have. I was counting how many people came in. And I was checking how much they were buying and what were they buying? Were they buying regular beer? Were they buying fancy beer? Were they buying bottled beer? Were they buying whiskey bottles? Were they buying hamburgers or, or the local food? So I surveyed that and I saw their suppliers, the beer delivery companies came in. And so not only I talked to the customers and I found out what the customers liked and what the customers didn't like and how the customers felt about pay so I could check pricing levels, but I saw the actual suppliers. And when the suppliers came in, I asked them for their name card. They gave me the name card. And so I had companies that could supply me just by visiting a competitor. And surprisingly, the I met the owner and I, I told the owner that uh, congratulations, he has a good business here. I'm thinking about doing the same thing. And he started laughing and he says, are you sure? And so we started talking and we talked to many hours and he actually told me everything. He told me how profitable his business is. He told me uh, which company suppliers were good to use, which suppliers were bad to use. He actually set up almost all of my business. So a competitor gave me almost all of the financial information I needed. So that's the, the first thing I want to point out. Not everybody is going to do that, but try. The more you try, the more you go check, the more you talk to other people, the more information you're going to have. And just a research report, especially if it's a couple of years old, might not be accurate. You have to talk to your customers. And as far as general financing and selling, find out who is a potential customer, what do they want, not just what you think they want, and what, what prices they're comfortable paying. Um, so all of this, it's all hypothetical. It's all a dream because it doesn't exist yet but you have to get it, you have to clarify it, you have to write it down and then check it is accurate before you start for at least three years. Otherwise, there's going to be huge problems. That's why you have the requirement. So before I get into the actual financial details, I just wanted to tell you, make sure you go check your competitors and find out what they're doing. Sometimes if it's a public company, they will show their annual reports online and you can definitely use all of that. Um, other times, if it's a small little uh, restaurant or bar or um, something that you think is, is not going to have big annual reports, you can just walk in and try to be a customer, maybe buy one of those products or, 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 or services to see for yourself. Um, with that said, yes, I will take a break now. Um, sorry for going a little bit beyond 45 minutes. Um, after uh, we have our 10, 15 minute break, then uh, we will come back and I will go through more about how you can actually start making your financial statements rather than just getting it from somebody else. Any questions before we take our break? Um, no, it's clear. Okay, so it's 11.15 now. Um, Anybody request you want a 10 minute break, you want a 15 minute break, research shows you should have a 45 minute session of learning. And then at least the 10 to they say 12, 13 minutes is the ideal time to take your mind off of things and then come back. Um, but it all research, it depends on the person. So whatever you guys think is good. I think 15 is enough for our breakfast break. Okay. Yes, so at 11.30, we will come back and I will be talking with you guys about the actual finances starting at, uh, not 11, at 30 minutes after the hour. I guess it's still 9.30 your time, right? Okay, see everybody in uh, 15 minutes. So uh, welcome back. We are now at a time where we can talk about the details about the 
finances when you are developing your new business your your project development uh, you you have to go through the finances and the startup costs the income statement the balance sheet the cash flow statement all of those are absolutely required and uh, it is usually advisable especially for this course to try to get as detailed as possible for three years not just uh, guess what is the sales cost now but you need to go through all of the startup costs and all of the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement for three years, even though your business doesn't start. So how do we do that? Um, first thing, the, the basics for almost any business. Um, I find it very interesting that in accounting classes, they will teach this formula, but they don't teach this green arrow. I think the green arrow is a huge part that CEOs and top executives know and entrepreneurs should know, but almost nobody talks about it. The idea that your sales and your revenue, obviously that's the ultimate goal that everything is developed and measure from. And then your cost of goods sold uh, is uh, subtracted from that. You have your gross profit, other variable costs, your contribution margins, your operating uh, fixed costs, then your earnings before interest and taxes, and then you have your taxes. And a lot of people complain about taxes. However, maybe I shouldn't talk too much about this since I was just saying the government does help very, very well with embassies and consulates around the world. Um, you, if you don't want to pay taxes, some executives. Just, uh, sorry, uh, I, I hear. Um, some other chats, but uh, if the taxes are too big, you can take that money that could be taxed and use it to um, buy more supplies or expand your business or provide some bigger bonuses to, to, uh, to, to grow. Uh, with that said, next, we've already gone through the income statement. How can you figure out the income statement? How can you find this stuff? Number one, if you are a manufacturing organization, this amount, uh, which we show here, 80%, 20%, 7.5%, 5%, these are standard in the, the Western world for factory products. So if you're making up uh, an actual product, manufactured products, it can change depending on what you're doing. But if you are making some product, whatever your sales are, 80% should be generally the costs of those goods, and then 20% of the profit, but then you have to sell, pay for the selling expense, your administration expense, um, and then you get down to the interest if you're borrowing money and the taxes. Um, so start thinking of those types of, of details. Uh, here is an example. For example, somebody is making handbags. And if the sales is $2,500, the costs of goods sold, uh, $1,000, variable costs, $50, contribution margin, uh, you will have this much uh, that you can see is coming from, you're selling 100 handbags times $25 a bag. Uh, again, the idea of costs of goods sold, it costs you $10 per bag to make it or to buy it with the supplies. That's 100 bags times $10 for bag, $1,000. Uh, other variable costs, maybe you're going to put a small little uh, decoration uh, on your bag, like a charm, 50 cents per charm. You, so you can get those. What I wanted to talk about is how you should be able to get this if you're making clothes, for example, there's hundreds, thousands, millions of companies making clothes you should be able to see what is normal. This type of chart, this is making a type of clothes, like your handbag. Um, so your income statement should be relatively similar to this. Is there any income statement or any business that you think is going to be a problem? That any class students having a challenge about how do you find out how much do you, you sell it for? How do you find out how much it's going to be to, to, to make it? Any ideas, any questions? Or can we move on to another one? Here is... Uh, yes, I have a question. Okay. John. 
it's about uh, the like reliable of the number our which given by our own business like we cannot obviously we cannot make up uh, numbers about the sales obvious so like sure, sure you you have, lots of people do it all the time <laughs> oh like can, in Vietnam, it was standard <laughs> yeah but this the 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 real reality part you also have to evolve in this number too so do the task requires to be the numbers to be more reliable like um you are the expert as i said an income uh, a, a business plan your project plan you are the only one that's going to ask a hundred questions about it and have a hundred answers the, the judge the assessor the professor in the united kingdom number one maybe he's never been to vietnam maybe he has no idea about costs in vietnam and i pretty much guarantee he doesn't care as much about your business as you do he's probably i'm just guessing just looking to make sure you understand what are the basics the basic requirements and how to make those basic requirements so if your numbers are a little bit off he might not know. However, if you say that you're, you're selling some item, whether it's a, a pen or, or whatever, and you say that you're making like a 95% profit on your pen, that is probably not reasonable. And he's going to know that. So you need to identify at least one other reasonable company and then you can replicate using some of their numbers because your business is a little bit different than theirs you're going to change details and then it's better if you find another competitor what are their numbers and then another one another one and try to make the average of those reflected in your results so yes you are supposed to have 20 slides in your PPT, you're supposed to have your report, which is 3000 words, but probably in addition to that, you should have an appendix. Like I say, you should have a Google folder and inside your folder, if you show you have three other companies or five other companies also making handbags or making the same type of product and this price, this price, this price, this price, you are uh, uh, almost the same price, maybe a little bit more expensive. And then you explain why you are more expensive because you're doing something better. That makes sense. They're not going to have any questions. You don't really need to show all details of all other companies. But in your 3000 word plan, you can explain it is the average of three other companies or five other companies. Does that make sense? The, the question was, the information might not be reliable. You can Hi. see. And what, are you clear about what the professor just said? Yeah, uh, yes, it's OK. I think basically he's just want me to understand about uh, it, of course, about the, the reliable numbers, we can make it up, it's okay, but we have to like uh, compare with our competitors in the same industry in order to for the number to be more like look realistic. Um, one of the main requirements is that you have good references, so you should be showing where you're getting your information from. If you're getting your information just from a textbook, like I just showed you, this 100%, 80%, 20%, 12.5, 7.5, 5, 2.5, that is probably not good enough. The assessors will want to see, yes, you understand the industry average from a textbook, but a textbook in USA may be very different than the reality in Ho Chi Minh or in Hanoi. So, you could use this average, but then you also should reference a real company. So you're basing most of your business plan off of 
a real business that already exists, but you are going to be significantly different in a certain way. So you, you have to show references. What, what is the main issue? Uh, there's several people that were asking about questions related to numbers. How are you going to find numbers going forward? Um, who else has a question there? Nobody has? I have a question. question. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, to uh, project uh, the financial statement, we uh, have to input some uh, assumptions. And uh, can you advise us the some assumption test and the cost will uh, show how, how percentage of revenue and, and, and uh, for startup, um, how is the growth of sales? Sorry, I uh, maybe there's too much wind coming in through the window or something. I, I didn't really hear you. Could you repeat and clarify your your I question? In my in my microphone. Can you say the question again? What is it that you're looking for? Share my uh, screen. Uh, yes, Quan, yes, you, you can, can share, share the screen? screen now. Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? I see your computer monitor, yes? Yeah. For my, uh, my uh, financial model, I have uh, some assumptions about uh, the, the revenue, the price per product, and, and the uh, sale growth rate, and uh, I uh, wondering two assumptions is uh, the sale growth rate. <laughs> I start with uh, 100 percent uh, growth rate of sale, and uh, can you advise us uh, uh, which number is uh, reasonable for what, startup? What is your product again? Uh, I am. Uh, our product is uh, non-alcoholic beer. Non-alcoholic beer. Um, okay, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe in your very first month because no, 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 nobody no. knows of is, you. Is it the, the, the sale rate uh, per year? As you can see, you, uh, we start function with uh, uh, 2,000 uh, that's what I don't believe. I don't believe that in your very first month, when you start your business, you're going to have 2,000 sales. I believe it's reasonable to think in your first month, you might have 100 sales, 100 bottles sold, because you have no marketing done, no sales done. No customers knows of you. Yes. Nobody knows of you. Why is anybody going to buy anything from you? Yeah. So to start thinking, you have um, what you're you're showing here. What I didn't believe is that you start very very high and very very successful immediately. It's better to show that you start at a, a reasonable number and then you grow. Maybe you can grow 20% or 30% or every month. You know, that's reasonable. But starting with, you know, Okay, so now he's back. So, uh, the so idea sorry, Professor, we didn't hear you before. Could you repeat that? Yes, the idea of your, um, you were saying you were initially making lots and lots of sales in your very first month and a little bit more the second month and a little bit more the third month, but you have no marketing done, no sales done, no customers have ever heard of you 
before your first month. And then you assume to get 2,000 products sold. I think that is pretty hard to believe for almost any business unless you are super, super lucky and you have been, uh, even then, I was going to say if you've been promoting it for a year in advance, that means your business started it a year earlier. Um, so first month, maybe you're selling 100 products. Yeah. Second month, maybe 20% more or 15% more or even 30% more could be reasonable. So you, you can grow. You are growing nine, uh, less than 9%. I, I, I put the assumption that the sales growth rate per year is 100%. So the, the January we sell 100 bottles and the, the last month is uh, 200. I, I hope you understand my point because initially you were showing in one month that you have very, very good sales. That's what an assessor or an investor will ask you lots of questions about. Usually even when you watch Shark Tank, if somebody has very good sales, they need to show why that's not believable. And for example, if you are an expert at making viral videos where you can get a billion people watching your video immediately, then yeah, maybe you can have lots of sales, but most people cannot have instant marketing to millions of people. If you have a Facebook page or Zalo page or Viber page where you have, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers or um, many followers, then you give them a bonus. If they promote this product to their customers, then they get a benefit. Then yes, you'll have very rapid sales, but most people don't have that. So how are you going to get sales in your first month? any of you. Yeah. We can sell to our family members, our friends. <laughs> <laughs> you have 5 million friends? I want to party with you. You must be a really good person to party with because... <laughs> you know, in, in Vietnam, so for first month, so normally, uh, so family members and friends are the, you know, the customers. But still, most people don't have 5 million family. <laughs> My brother might not even buy anything from me. <laughs> so uh, the idea is just to be rea realistic and, and make plans for that. Maybe you can start 100 bottles in the first two or three months because it's going to take three months to make a viral video or a viral TikTok or, or YouTube video to promote it. Or maybe you're going to have a competition to have all of your followers. Maybe you have 50,000 followers and you can get your followers to have a competition and get free drinks for a month if they have a very good uh, marketing uh, video. And so you have 50,000 people making many, many different marketing campaigns that will help you grow. That would be good. So talk about those things. But just uh, what, what is the reasonable uh, sale growth rate per year? Um, there, is, there is no, okay. Um, the first year, a lot of businesses will sell things but lose money. And in the second year, a lot of businesses should plan to still maybe lose money a little bit, close to breaking even, covering your costs. And then in the third year, you start to make profit. That is a traditional belief. But that belief was created before the internet. It was created like 50, 100 years ago. That's what businesses generally started to do from word of mouth. And the fact that you had a real marketing department and sales department with, with, with salesmen going out, talking to other people. But now 
if you are good on the internet, things change. Does that make sense? Yes. <clears throat> so how good are you on the internet? And the reality, I don't really care the truth about how good you are for the, for the school project. In the school project, you should attach your resume to your business plan because that shows who you are. It shows your experience. And when you introduce yourself, maybe they don't care in U the UK, elementary school, middle school, high school, university you went to. That's probably not that important. But if you tell them you went to the biggest elementary school, middle school, high school, and university, and the most famous that had the richest customers. So you are connected to thousands of other students that are close friends of yours from graduating in each class. Those people will promote you because of your culture. That's good. And if you show that you have in your resume, 100,000 followers in, in Zalo or Viber or, or Facebook, and you use those to promote your product, then rapid growth is okay. But just explain how you're going to get rapid growth. Explain how you're going to get 2,000 customers to know about your product. Yeah. And, and usually, if you have 2,000 customers, that means probably there's at least 10 times more that you've told or you showed the sign, you've showed the marketing, and they said no. So you need to be able to show it to many, many people, and maybe 10%, if you're lucky, will buy your product. Does that make sense? And then after your first month, it can you can continue growing and continue getting better. You know, 10%, uh, 15%, 20%, 30% growth is, is pretty good. Except if you have a viral video or a special contest to help people grow. So hopefully that helps with, with everything, not just your, um, what was it that you said your product was again? Uh, alcoholic beer. Oh yes, the, the, the non-alcohol beer. Uh, okay, so the, the hamburgers would be almost the exact same. How about somebody from the Burger King group? How many burgers does the Burger King group think you are going to make in your first month? So I think uh, I think we can uh, boost the sales growth for the several months, the first several months, and uh, the sales growth will will be uh, dismissing dismiss uh, for the last period of the first year. As you can see, I I put the assumption that. You're, you're not speaking into your microphone. It's a little bit hard to hear you. Yeah, I, I, I put the assumption that uh, the sales growth rate for the first year is uh, uh, 250%. And uh, you can see the sales growth rate for month. Okay, you're using a formula, and the formula is reasonable, but you still need to be able to explain it. Like, what's the explanation? Yeah, you, you, you reference the, uh, other the competitors. Rate, um, the sales growth rate per month is uh, decreased. Okay, yeah. here's, a, here's one question for you. What is another company doing the same type of detail? What is their first month sales? Yeah. Do you have another competitor details? They are two. Uh, Big uh, company in the library. Uh, you have a classmate doing the same type of business, right? You are selling food and drink to customers. Your classmates are also selling burgers, food and drink to, to customers. Why don't you talk together, right? Work together. It's the almost the exact same details. So <laughs> is, is somebody, why don't you ask right now, one of your classmates? Hey, uh, hello, Dr. Shea. Yes. Uh, so 
yeah so i i in the group one the the burger king business model so i think uh, i have done the some calculation based on like uh, google search but uh in uh, the us uh, the burger king has sold like uh, 15.7 million uh, sell per day and the population is around like uh, more than 300 around like exactly like 390 uh, 29 uh, million uh, 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 people so i think that's the, the average is that uh, about uh, for every uh, uh, people in in uh, in the area we can sell like uh, zero point uh, around like four percentage up. We can serve like a four percentage of the people in the area, and uh, I think for for I, I I'm recently uh, like uh, working for a startup. So you should normally we usually like uh, uh, estimate around like ten percent of the market share from the the, the 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 whole market when we enter in the first month. If we done something like uh, PR marketing and like some uh, good promotion enough. So for example, we choose uh, Kunta to operate our first store. Yeah, so Kunta population is around uh, 1.2 million uh, people. So 4% of that is... Uh, let me see. Like uh, for percent of that is 50,000, uh, 51,000 order per day. But uh, when we enter the market, we can only like, take like 10% of the market share. Yeah, so so I think it's around like five order thousand per day in, in the first month. Okay. If we have enough like location and uh, promotion and marketing. Yes, so that's some like quick calculation. I would like to ask group three, to be the judge and don't tell me what you have, but evaluate that. So people in group three, no, and Tuan and Tuan, I would like you to pretend you are the investor from the UK. What did you just hear? Ask them a comment, ask them to repeat something or, or analyze both the um, group six, project about the uh, Zoe Craft non-alcoholic beer and the Burger King group. What is your analysis of that? Practice being the, the judge yourself. Somebody from group three, Tuan or Tuyen or not, can I hear a comment from you? Uh, group three, we have uh, no. And uh, Diana. Um, so I, uh, I don't have any comment here, but I just wonder that uh, if they start uh, sell the product in the January of 2022. Uh, so uh, I wonder that how they uh, predict their the product that they sell is 100 uh, products and then it increased uh, in the next month. And I, I mean that I just uh, wonder that it's, it's, it's good impossible to, to, to sell that 100 years uh, in the first month if they don't have the uh, marketing, the good plan for, mom, for marketing. So your, um, let, okay. So we have the uh, craft beer company, they're selling, they're going to uh, sell 100 bottles of beer and the Burger King company, they have analyzed it by saying, United States has, I don't know, 6,000 Burger Kings and the average Burger King sells this much per year. And so we're trying to do that. And you are saying that their number of 100 beer is hard to believe in one month. Great. What about restaurant? Another group, group four, uh, Long or uh, Vung or Tam. 
Can you comment? Do you uh, think another yes. beer is is reasonable? The more you talk about this, the more you network and think about it out loud, the clearer things become. Hopefully very soon, you're going to start thinking alike. So talk out loud. What does the temple company think? Or anybody else in the Milky? Anybody else? We've heard from one person in group three. Um, there's two more people in group three and three more people in group four. Can you guys also act like Shark Tank? I think uh, uh, the... Uh, Mr. Paul, could you please share the uh, revenue plan? I want to, to be look like a little bit clearer. Uh, share your screen. Fine. You mean like the, 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 the revenue? Yeah, that's one, that's one. So I saw you are planning to have like 50% growth uh, monthly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it looked uh, quite unrealistic for me because you just think about the uh, seasonality also. Yeah. Good. Uh, Very good. Good. That's a really about good thing to talk about. So in Vietnam, yes. It's hard to like uh, maybe June or July just put like 30 or 70, even 50% growth in sale revenues. Good. But okay, let's talk about this in general. What about the average? Do you think 15% is in one month? Do you I think don't that's think so. possible? You Let's say 50% so. for one year or 20% we must for one year. For one year? Yes. No, I, one year. I don't think so because the, the first year we start with a small small number. So the, the, the scale is, is small, then the, the growth rate is bigger. Uh, if, the, if the business expands, you uh, have a, a large market share. Uh, go red, maybe we will uh, decrease. Uh, believe me, it would be very feasible if you think about uh, how much you can sell for the first year, and then you divide yes. uh, uh, in the, into the smaller, good. smaller, so smaller we... months, smaller periods. Uh, don't put it like months and months and months like this. Yeah, I, I um, actually the the first origin. Uh, version the first version I I input uh, yearly growth rate and smooth uh, the for the monthly. Yes, would be now you put it two thousand for first year and then you just put like euro or January. And so, uh, based oh, on that, I, 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 I have uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, 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 we still need to have the class uh, uh, so just uh, oh, just uh, just a minute just a minute okay R whatever you guys think make notes of your thought and make sure you make notes of what somebody else is also thinking. Because the judge will think different, the customer will think different, people will think different than you. And so whatever you just showed, this uh, non-alcohol beer company, I hope that first spreadsheet you had, you save that and you show the UK Sunderland people, that was your first plan. But now, and we, we plan to do things a different way, but after surveying and after realistic details, we change the numbers. You have to save crazy numbers at the beginning. So any numbers you had, save that, put that in your appendix because you have to show it. And then you can show the real details later. Why did things change? Number one, they changed because you're serving at least six other people. There's three people that you're serving from group three, the milk tea company. There's three people you're serving from the restaurant company in group four. There's three people that you're serving, you know, from the, the Burger King company and the, the craft uh, beer. All of you guys, everything you say, you should be serving people and show UK people, this is what people say. Do not take the answer from one person and say that one person represents everybody. That is a mistake. Make sure you talk to many customers yourself, many potential investors yourself. So although An is the maybe the leader of group one, you must also talk to Uyen and Bao. And although maybe Tuan is the, the leader or the representative of group three, the milk tea shop, you should also talk to no and to him because they may have 
slightly different uh, understanding or details. And the more survey details you get, the more you're going to learn and the better it's going to be for the UK. So why aren't you surveying me? I used to own a bar. I used to sell beer and sometimes non-alcoholic beer. And I can tell you in the first week that I would open business, I know I have to do crazy things to get lots of customers talking. I don't just put a sign on the wall saying, buy the beer. That's not good enough. You need to get people really talking. So make a party, make some special event, make some reason for people to talk a lot. Maybe you're going to give your, your beer away and lose money giving it away just so people know about it in your first hour of business or two hours I, of business. I have a, a budget. <laughs> Sorry? I have a budget for, for the, the party. Good, <laughs> good. But I, I, I didn't say... I a month. <laughs> good. Does anybody see how it could work? And let me repeat. I'm not saying give products away forever. And I didn't say give products away all week long. I was saying in your first week, in order to get customers talking about you for some time, you have a special event. Maybe you will say that first day that you start selling is a party. And maybe from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., the beer is free. And in reality, maybe not many people are looking for a free beer from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. And so then you can go from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's maybe just you're, you're giving your product away at your cost. So you don't lose any money, but you get a lot of customers coming in. And then you can say maybe from um, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock when it's very busy time, you can also give it away at a special discount. Or whoever can drink it the fastest can continue drinking for free for the next hour. And so you have many crazy people trying to drink really, really fast. That can get people promoting you. And then you go back from 10 o'clock to 2 in the morning, regular price. So that you have promoted things and you only lost money for one customer that did a lot of marketing for you. So the marketing was valuable. And when you gave money away from three o'clock to four o'clock, you don't think anybody's going to be there. So it's not going to be that much, but you advertise in your first night for a certain time, it will be free. And then in the small print, you can say from three o'clock to four o'clock. And then from four o'clock to six o'clock, it's different. From six o'clock to another clock, it's different. Understand? It's marketing. And I can tell you, it should be very easy in one night to have 100 bottles you know, disappear or, or sold, especially if they're being promoted. Understand? So 100 bottles is, is reasonable. 2,000 in one night, that's a really big party or many big parties for a whole month. So as long as you show you have something like that connected to it, it's possible. I, where are you? Are, are you going to be connected to the, the party area, like where many people are partying? Then you could have many customers walking back and forth. And as long as you advertise your product or your hamburger or your milk tea, as long as it's a good location and there's many people walking in front of you, if you're giving it away at your cost, you should be able to get lots of sales. It's just your profit is going to be different each month or maybe even each hour for your first little while. Understand? So, so talk about those details. How about the, did I hear from the milk tea people? Did I hear from Nok or Tuan or Tuyet? Did you guys give a comment? Uh, I have comment, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's... Um... Yeah, it's maybe it's uh, fifteen percent. Is it not logic on so? Because uh, you know, it's for for me. It's a when. Yeah, it's a sale grow monthly, 
Oh, okay, it's year 100%. It's just the thing about this because the, we should uh, compare with uh, what is um, the whole competitor. If the whole competitor less uh, increase, the growth less uh, increase from 12% to uh, 20%, we should choose uh, in the range like 15% per year is not 100% because we have to base on our competitor, every in competitor in the market. And second, I think, yeah, if we choose uh, 15%, per month, it's not logical answer because, uh, you know, when he choose 15% uh, per month, that's, and uh, finally, uh, per year is 500%. Uh, it's it's huge number, it, it's not logical. It's so think about, yeah, when we choose uh, the percentages every month, uh, we should think about also accumulate the the growth in the year and growth in the year is a, it's a big number and it's not re realistic. And yeah, it's my um, opinion. My um, opinion. We should focus on first. It's choose the number. It's really reasonable in comparison with the competitor. If the competitor that's only the range of ten uh, percent and to twenty um, percent, with that's uh, to fifteen or that's ten percent because we are new uh, business. And second, when we choose the monthly growth. It suits the thing about it's a year how much because if we choose only 15% and total in the year, it's a 500%. It's not realistic and it's my comments. Yeah, thank you. Good. So, uh, hopefully, uh, affordable because, I, because I, I, the, the startup, um, the startup is different than the mutual company we can't really hear you can you try to speak directly into the microphone sorry uh if you're talking to the class please try to have your voice loud so the class can hear you it sounds like you're speaking very far away from the microphone yes yes i th i think the go red of my startup companies is different than uh, the mutual company growth rate. Absolutely. Uh, yes. For the first year, we start with a small, uh, small business, small revenue, small sales, so we can uh, pump the the, the, the absolute uh, amount. Is uh, the absolute amount is is not big. But the growth rate is very big. Right. So there's two things I hope your classmates heard from you. Um, everything you're talking about, every one of you, you are correct. But it's better if you put it all together. Number one, make sure when you are talking about what is your industry average, that is after you have been doing business for several years, after your customers are basically stable, your sales are stable, your profit is stable, then you can match the average you see in other areas. But as a startup, you should be thinking your first month, there is no average. So you in the first file I saw, you showed your profit and your sales together are going to grow at the same time. Do you really plan to have no discounts when you start? I would guess it might be a little bit different. So what about in the Burger King company? In your first month, do you think you're going to give away burgers for free? For a short time, not not months, but maybe a, at a certain hour. For example, I believe today, internationally, McDonald's is giving away their Egg McMuffin for crazy. It, it's like 10 cents. It, usually they sell it for like $2 or $3. But on the Thursday from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., very short amount of time, they will give it away for 10 cents. 
but it's only the egg McMuffin, not the drink, not the coffee, not anything else. And after 10 p.m., it goes back up to the normal price. Is that reasonable? What do you think, Burger King? Is sales and your profit going to stay the same in your first month, second month, third month, the whole year? Is Group one, uh, bow. All of those, there's three of them, right? So bow, an, win, all together. What, what do you think? Anybody in the group, anybody in the class, is your sales going to be the same as the profit in your first month, second month, third, in your first year? I don't think so. I think it's going to change a lot. I don't think so. Uh, it's because of the first month when, uh, uh, especially for the startup, so you can get the average, but because I, as a startup, startup so I'll try to get, you know, maybe the certain percent lower than average. And at the first month, so you have to spend a lot of um, the uh, expense like for cost. So, uh, it's not as same as the next month. And also when you get the average, so try to use the uh, the competitors in the market where you're uh, targeting, not getting you know the report from the US and you apply it into the into Vietnam. So Vietnam and US are the different markets. It's, the a, it's a great, it's very good that you have information, period. If you have US information, great, use that, but try to use as much as possible. As soon as you start getting into it, you're going to learn more and more and have more and more information. Write down, that's the first information you had, and then maybe two or three days or three weeks later, you may have very different information in your final report. But save all of this information you start, and you have to show that your first assumption for sales is different than the final sales you have. I would pretty much guarantee you your first, uh, the, the um, non-alcoholic dough craft beer company, you were saying you're going to have 2,000 bottles in January, 2,000, what, 200 or something in February, and you're going to keep growing every month. Save that because you, you need to show the UK that. But then now we're talking together. I think your number of sales that you could grow maybe 15%. That's, that's very high. It's very high, but it's not the same as your profit. You probably want to plan to lose money so that you're not profitable. And for a short time, you're giving your product away so that you have customers. People are talking about you. You have to spend money for advertising. By giving it for free, then you're using that for your marketing expense. So in your first month, two months, three months, it's probably losing a lot of money, but your sales is growing fast. And I think that's for everybody. What about your e-commerce clothing company? Hugh and Lynn and Min, when you're selling clothes online, your first month, nobody knows about you, right? In the second month, only a few customers know of you. The third month, only a few people know more. So one way to get either alcohol sold or milk tea or burgers, whatever you're trying to sell, is you start by giving it away for free, right? You have to pay for marketing. You have to pay for your, your sales expense. If you just put a sign and say the beer is free, that is marketing expense. You don't do it forever. Maybe you control it so it's only a certain time and that's going to get certain people. You don't say clearly it's all year long, but you say, you know, join this event. Sometimes it's for a limited time. It's free. That will attract attention, right? 
yeah, uh, for the e-commerce of our um, project management, we think about first month or second month, we don't have uh, a lot of percentages because uh, we are new and maybe in first month and second month, we focus on marketing strategy and also for from the third month to um, uh, from the, the end of this year and also from to uh, summer season because it's a high season for sale maybe we can increase uh, yeah 15 percent for example but we think also from the uh, july uh, the next year we we lose some percentages because it's not high season and that's why we think about this and also we create the three scenario some month we have a we, we can increase the percentages, but some month we lose the percentages. And so, in, yeah, we create the three scenario, but yeah, like I explained, two first month we focus on marketing strategy. And in that season, like, like uh, the end of this year and um, summer season, we can in, have a percentage if it's uh, attractive percentages, but from the July, we will lose some percentages because, because uh, yeah, like uh, I asked Professor um, Less yeah, last week, yeah, we have a difficulty because uh, we have uh, no reason. Maybe we focus on some small event like a birthday appliance. Yeah, but we think about we lose uh, some percentages from July. Yeah. Good. So what you're doing now, you're getting a lot more information. You're getting more thinking information. Uh, you started and you thought you're going to have this number. And now, because you're talking to more people, you're, you're thinking it's going down. Good. And you're identifying it's not going to be the same every year. It's going to go up and down. So that's good. That's more detail. One thing that I haven't really heard yet, it's good to have the average in the United States. It's good to have, it's better to have the average in Vietnam. It's good to have any average especially your industry average. The clothing sales is different than the hamburger or the bubble tea or the non-alcoholic beers. They're all slightly different averages. But your first year and your second year, it is not average, right? You guys are talking about using averages, but you're not going to be average until your business is stable. So at the third year, whatever your numbers are at the third year, that year, your numbers should be close to the average. But in your first year, it should be losing money. And it should only grow for a reason. What is the reason it's going to grow? And it's not going to grow every month. It's going to grow because of an event. How are you going to get more customers? You have that one event, you're going to get a lot more customers. And then you stop the event and it's going to go down. And you have another event and it's going to go up again. And only after you keep doing those events, whatever the event is to promote you, that's when it's going to slowly get up. And the profit has to change. At the beginning, nobody knows you, nobody trusts you, nobody cares about you, so you have to plan to use your money for marketing, for sales. And generally you just take it out of your sales price. If you give it for free or you give it for uh, a discount, that's one way, except if you're going to try to sell to luxury customers, sometimes the luxury customers don't want it for free. Luxury customers, Sometimes they want the most expensive that costs the most money. Just because of that, you'll have extra sales. So you must understand your average, your industry average, that number should match in the third year, but not the first year. The first year, you have to start with a little bit and have events to attract them. Do we have... I also, I also totally with uh, what it says. So, uh, you based on the average, but uh, for, uh, at the first uh, step, so it should be lower than that average level. But I'm, I'm wondering, 
whether we just apply the average in the different uh, environment the market like US into Vietnam because I, as I see, you know, the, uh, the demand and the customer preferences are different. It's not what else do you have? If you don't have anything, you have to start with something. Starting with the average in Nepal or in Argentina, it's okay to start. But obviously, it's better to have an average of your customers in your city, wherever you're trying to work. That's better. But if you have zero information, at least if you know this is happening in some other place, it's a good start. Try to start with anything and then get better and better and better, more and more accurate information as fast as you can. Yeah, we, we, we try to, uh, yeah, to receive our information. Maybe it's not exact in Vietnam, but we try to benchmark information to, uh, yeah, to have an acceptable, um, yeah, number. Right. Yeah. And, and again, because your project one part of your project, uh, I think it is, what slide? Um, in uh, the UK, they will check that your original business plan is different than your final business plan. And so you need to show those details. So where is it? Uh, this idea here so 1.1 you're talking about the um develop the outline of your product so you don't just talk about any burger you'll talk about the the cheap burger and then the average burger then the luxury expensive burger and then there's the marketing promotional giveaway burger something like that and then analyze the factors that contribute to that process. The process, for example, will start with marketing. You will start marketing in your first month very differently than you'll do marketing in your third year. Your very first month, your marketing is to give things away for a price that really attracts customers. If it's a regular burger or regular bubble tea or regular temple food or regular non-alcohol beer that has maybe regular type customers or the average customers might like it, then yes, you can, for the average person, they might like discounts. But if you're going to be selling, I'm not sure if the non-alcohol beer is a luxury beer, and I'm not sure about that temple food, if that's a luxury food or even your e-commerce clothes, is that luxury clothes? If you are working with luxury customers, maybe you should not give discounts. Maybe you should give your product for the regular price, which is very expensive, but maybe you give a massage away at the same time or you give a, a free valet parking ticket away for the customer to come in. Because the luxury people don't usually want to be associated with having to go cheap. They don't want that discount. Maybe it's a competition. Whoever has the, the biggest purchase, whoever has the every uh, first sale is, is given away for free just because it's the first sale. And then the 10th sale, the 50th sale, the 100th sale, each of those may get discounts or, or free just because you're promoting this luxury product. That could maybe attract customers. Or, for example, some luxury customers, they're going to be flying a lot more than regular customers. Maybe it will allow them some special access in the airport, like the airport executive lounge, not the regular lounge, something like that. Those promotional activities need to be understood. And it's not going to be all year. It's going to change month by month, however many activities you do, how many, many Burger Kings promotional activities you have, however many bubble tea promotional activities you have. When you have a promotional event, your sales is going to drastically change from the day before and the day after. And then it's going to drop quite a bit until you have another event. 
So you need to have many different events or try to get some viral event like getting many students to create videos and then whoever is the winning student with many viral followers or views, that student gets to eat free or drink free or get the, the product for free for a month or a week or, or a day, whatever. And your, your sales that first year relate to that. Don't just say your profit is always going to grow at this amount. It won't, it should not. And your, your sales growth is going to keep growing this amount. It's not in your first year. It's only going to keep growing by the time you're in your third year. So try to link the big growth experiences to an, an excuse, an, an event like TET. But even then, your first TET holiday, nobody knows of you, nobody's going to buy from you. What are you going to do, all of you, um, for the e-commerce clothes and for the Burger King and for the bubble tea and for your restaurant, your, your temple restaurant and for your non-alcoholic beer? TET is the, the first big event. How are you going to get anybody to know of you, whether it's TED or not? Any, any comments? For the TED holiday, you mean? It, how are you going to get customers to know about you to take your first product? Yes. Uh, yes, we go. Yes. Yeah, go, go along. Uh, for, uh, we're going to do the meal package and to, to make people know about us, we go directly to them uh, to talk uh, about our product. Or we can uh, do the cooking, cooking show on the, uh, on the television. Or you can use the uh, online KOL to present about our product. Yes. Uh, people launching the product and services, so definitely, you know, the uh, the business needs to do the mark, uh, marketing to promote uh, the products and the service. Definitely, we have to do that before launching it. Uh, so in my experience, that uh, to when they first have to get the first uh, our company to get the first customer is uh, we run ever first thing is we run advertisement on our social network first is one of the more efficiency. But uh, if you had more budget to uh, bring the, the the product to the customer, we can use the agency to get a promotion. Uh, like in, if you go to the, the coffee shop or you go to the supermarket, you can see so many television, uh, so much television and it show a lot of the product of cost product with a lot of promotion out there to con to get attraction from the customer. So it depends on the, the kind of the product or the service. We can uh, negotiate with the, the agency that uh, 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 the time uh, and uh, the, the customer uh, we are focusing on to get the promotion like uh, the the position and uh, the, to, to set up the television to show the customer to get more attraction. Okay, but you're probably not going to use the television every day all week. That's really expensive. You probably only use the television advertising maybe just before TED, right, good. So for that event, the very first time since nobody knows of you, even though you're gonna use television, I would suggest your first television for bubble tea or for the uh, Burger King burgers or for the basic, the regular customer sales, start with a promotional activity. Um, so you have TV saying, you know, for the first week on that Thursday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., it's 90% discount. Uh, that, to get the, uh, I mean, the television is not the, the program on television. This is like the monitor. You can, uh, you can monitor that show in the advertisement shop of a lot of company. And we can uh, uh, give our company information to that agency and the agency can run our product advertisement in the regular of time of the day. Even like, though it's like a big still expensive. Mm, uh, 
Yeah, must depend on the agency because uh, as a working, I know uh, some agency uh, they're working with the price is uh, very good. <laughs> I'm not really sure what, for example, if somebody is going to be selling the the hamburgers or the bubble tea uh, or clothes. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree because it, the, yeah, we we avoid the uh, television. Uh, yeah, because the television is very expensive in my experience. Right. Because uh, my company for now we don't use so much television to uh, show uh, our promotion because uh, it's so so expensive, and that's why yeah, for group two we base on the focus on two uh, act two main activities. First is the social network like a uh, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. And, Everybody uh, listen to that. Everyone that is yeah. free, but it needs experience. Yeah, Good. and Good. Uh, yeah, we uh, create also the fan base in the social network, and also we have that with the trend of the young people, because of some yeah some uh, trend of people like uh, some uh, uh, phrase of uh, famous Very people famous. influencer, mm -hmm. and second. Oh, yeah. thank you. Keep talking, but make sure everybody else in the class heard what you just said, because up until now. Everybody was saying, I think. Well, what you think, what you think is the average in the USA is not important. What you think is the average in Ho Chi Minh, that's not important. What you think, nobody cares. The only thing people care about is the customer. And he just said the influencer. That is a huge customer representative. He speaks for thousands or hundreds of thousands of customers. So find out what the customer values, especially in social media, because it's generally free. And that's where most customers are. Almost everybody is online. Almost everybody's seeing social media. I don't care if you're luxury or not, it's still in social media and generally social media is free. You can put a social media ad linked to the analytics, link it to the keywords that your customers will use, not your word, whether it's a bubble tea or a Burger King or international food or kids. Uh, again, the event should come from the analytics of the customer. And he just said he's going to follow young kids trends because of analytics. So he is speaking, not his words, but how can I say? Your words are not your words. They're the words of the customer. I hope you understand. Do you understand what that means? How about Bao Chan? Can you repeat what he just said? That's not his words? Anybody? How about um, John? Lin. Lin. Ha. I, I haven't talked too much to you guys because you're focused on the real estate, but it's still very important. Can, can Zhang or Lin or, or Ha in group five, can you repeat <laughs> that crazy thing that Hugh was just saying? It's, not, it's his words, but it's not his words that are important. What am I talking about? Am I crazy? Sorry, teacher, I have a question. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am from Group Three. We uh, have a project about the bubble tea, but it's a new a new product. It's a, like healthy healthy uh, music. So uh, we don't we concern about the price of the product. So can we take a uh, uh, can we do a survey, uh, for yeah for for someone to to know how they can spend for our product? Of is course. That, Everybody should be doing lots of surveys, lots of surveys. You, that's what we're doing now. What he's talking about, this question about his words versus other, that is a survey. He is checking what Google or what Facebook says the customers say. Analytics is a survey of big data. So every one of you must understand that. Your idea, not really important. So his words, him, I love Mr. Hugh, but his words are not important. But he said the customer's analytics words. 
That means he surveyed, he's getting survey data. And he's not asking you, 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 you. He just goes to the internet, big data, the cloud, the analytics will tell you what customers want. And it's usually free. So you were saying with your milk tea? Yes. It's, 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 tea. It's, it doesn't relate? Wrong. It, it exactly relates. You're the exact same as the hamburger, exact same as the eat clothing, exact same as, as the, the, the beer. It's the same. You have a product nobody knows about you. Yes. Nobody has been aware of you. There's no sales before. How do you start selling? You need to find out your market, like that big data, you can check people like it. Whether you say it's it's new or healthy or not, it, 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 it's the same. Maybe they can say the, the non-alcoholic beer is the exact same thing. It's a drink that's not dangerous, the same as you. It's a healthy drink. So it's exactly the same as you. But so far, we've been talking for, wow, uh, sorry, I think we were supposed to stop 45 minutes ago. <laughs> but the idea that your idea is bad, you must check your customer's idea. The fastest way to do it, the most efficient way to do it, is to get your customers information which is in the cloud in analytics in facebook analytics facebook insights google analytics it's free it's there it will tell you what your customer is doing what your customer likes market for that the only difference is the price you need to decide if you think it's a very luxury bubble tea then probably you don't want to give many discounts because luxury people probably will want just the top quality more than price. The average customer may want price focused, so a discount. But nobody is famous in your first month and second month, unless you're super, super famous with social media. And again, there you have to know the analytics. So take your lunch break, but during your lunch break, Think about what is Facebook analytics? What is Google analytics? How can I find what a customer will do? Um, sorry, since it is, I, I'm thinking, wow, uh, I talked 47 minutes too long. I need to hire all of you to manage my time. Um, please, during lunch and after lunch, let's talk more about the financials so that the average from anywhere, from Argentina to Alaska, any average is good to start with. But then, of course, you have to get more and more focus towards the customer. The best way to do it is to start with big data, information in Facebook analytics or YouTube analytics or uh, Google analytics. It's free to show you how many customers are there, what are they looking for, um, even how many times they're, they're buying, it might say some of those details. And then that is the average that you will get if you're lucky after three years. Your first year, it's going to be crazy. And your sales will not be the same as your profit. You should just assume your profit is going to be negative. You're going to lose money. And only maybe by three years, or if you're lucky, some people say if you're really working online, then maybe after six months, you can be profitable. But, but start thinking about those things. So your financials, your sales is good. What about after lunch, we'll talk about the process. You need to talk about your first month of business. You hire somebody to start collecting data. Hire somebody to start collecting that Facebook data or the customer data. And then, based off you get that survey information, then you can make your marketing plan. And your first year, you need to understand that. And then the, uh, what is the process? What are you going to do in your first week? What are you going to do in your, your second month? And start thinking of those things. I would suggest maybe you start with collecting staff that understand research, understand the analytics. 
Marketing analytics is very, very valuable. Maybe you get that person first, even before you have a CEO, even before you have a, an accountant, even before you have an engineer to start designing it. Because if you check with the customer, does the customer want, I don't know, black bubble tea or green bubble tea? Do they want a Big Mac burger or do they want a basic hamburger? Do they want uh, some fancy food in the temple restaurant or, or not? That, start with checking that first and then maybe a week later to maybe after the, maybe, I don't know, for three months, maybe you have no sales. Maybe you're not even going to try to do sales. You're just getting staff to get ready to start making the sales, not what you want, but what the analytics says the customer wants. I should shut up. <laughs> Any last questions before we take our two hour break? I think it's enough, uh, enough information. We try to follow it and uh, we note it and uh, we prepare our plan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>